In this video, we'll talk about production possibility curve or PPC. PPC is a very important uh, concept that we teach because the curve, when we'll draw it, we'll see can show us many micro and macroeconomic concepts that we've been talking about. So what is PPC? A PPC is a curve that shows different combination of two economic goods, which an economy can produce if all the resources are fully and efficiently employed. When we draw the curve, we will have some assumptions. Uh, the PPC assumes an economy with fixed amount of resources, which means land, labor, capital, enterprise is limited, is fixed, and does not vary when we are drawing a particular curve. Secondly, we also assume that there is a particular level of technology, which means that things are not changing when it comes to technology, because we will soon see that technology can result in us to become more efficient can result in our production possibilities to go up. So we will assume when we are drawing a particular PPC that technology will not change. And lastly, the PPC is a simplistic analysis which will only show us two codes. So let's now draw the diagram of PPC to see how it shows our productive potential of the economy. So let's draw the curve. Uh, when we are drawing a curve, we will first uh, see that on the x-axis, we will put, let's say good x, and on the y-axis, we will put good y. So let's say an economy is producing only two goods, good x and good y, and in reality, the economy we know can produce a lot many goods, but for our analysis, let's assume they're only producing two goods, good x and good y. And uh, let's assume also that when they produce these goods, they're using these resources fully and efficiently. Um, and, and therefore, when they do so, they can be on the PPC. So all points on the PPC, basically, we assume that resources are uh, fully and efficiently employed. Now, guys, when you're looking at the different points, for example, let's say this is 30 of good Y and 10 of good X, right? So you have 30 of good Y and 10 of good X. And let's say this is 20 of Y and 20 of good X. And let's say this value is 10 of Y and let's say 25 of good x. So I came up with these values. So what I can, you can see one thing is this, that, that as you go from A to B to C, when you get to produce more of x, this PPC is telling us, you are also producing less of y. And, and we can see why this is happening because when you draw a particular PPC, if you're assuming all resources are fully and efficiently employed, and then suddenly you are saying, hey, I want more of X, more of X can only happen if there's a less of Y taking place because if the resources are fully employed to begin with, and now you are reducing uh, the production of Y for more production of X, so you are diverting resources from Y to X because you don't have any extra resources lying anywhere because here you have fully employed your resources. So when you go from A to B, your resources are fully employed. So if I could sort of say one more definition here, a PPC can show basically for every amount of good X, the maximum amount of good Y that this economy can produce, produce if it is using its resources fully and efficiently and uh, with the given technology uh, and limited resources, it is telling us for every X, how much Y can I produce or how much the maximum quantity of Y I can produce for an economy. The PPC is very useful in telling us a lot of concepts that we've just talked about. The first concept we would like to talk about is scarcity. What is scarcity? Scarcity is simply unlimited uh, wants and limited resources. Now we know that all points on the PPC are where the resources are fully and efficiently employed. Uh, this means all points beyond the curve will become unattainable. For example, let's say I look at a combination of 25 of uh, X 
N20 of Y, which is somewhere here. If I look at this combina combination, let's call this combination D, which is 25 of X and 20 of uh, Y, this will be not possible to attain. Why? Because the economy cannot produce at any point outside its existing PPC. And the reason why that, that is because PPC is showing you your productive potential or maximum production level, which means you cannot go beyond this with the fact that you have what we call limited resources. The limited resources can make you achieve either 25 or 10 of X or 25 of X and 10 of Y or 20 of X and uh, 20 of Y, but not 25 and 20. So any point beyond the PPC we say is showing us scarcity because we cannot attain it due to the fact that there is limited resources that economy has. And we also know because of scarcity, people have to take uh, choices or make choices. So how do people make choices? Well, the, if the economy is choosing to be at A, which is 30 of Y and uh, 10 of X, more of X will lead them to produce, for example, 20 of X, but that would mean they will make a choice of having a sacrifice of 10 of Y. So more of X of 10 of X is leading to, let's say, a sacrifice of 10 of Y. So this means that all these combination A, B, C, which are, un which are attainable right now, also depicts us the concept of choice. So we can say that all points on the PPC are showing us choice. So A, B, C, all of these are showing us the various choices that the economy can take. And because of these choices, of course, if I decide to have more of X by going from A to B, I have 10 of X, I may need to sacrifice something of Y, which means that PPC also shows us an important concept of opportunity cost. Let's look at the opportunity cost in detail. So if I show you this diagram, guys, uh, as you can see in this diagram, what is happening is that as I move from A to B to C, I'm getting more and more of X, but I am also sacrificing something of Y. So if I look at the opportunity cost, this can be shown through what we call the slope of this PPC. Why is that so? Because the slope of the PPC tells us how much for every time we get X, how much of Y am I sacrificing? So for example, if I go from uh, A to B, I'm losing 10 of Y, but I'm also gaining, for example, 10 of X. So I can say this, that the slope, whether as I go from A to B, is this change in Y or change in X, which is going to be plus 10, in fact, minus 10 of Y, but I get plus 10 of X, which means as I go from A to B, every time I get one of good X, I'm losing one of Y because my slope is minus one. So slope tells us the idea that in order to get more and more of X, I have to sacrifice something of Y. So this negative value means that there is a sacrifice. And what's the size of that sacrifice? Well, I go from A to B, the size of the sacrifice is minus one, which means every time I get a more of X, I lose one of Y. So this slope is your opportunity cost of good uh, X in terms of Y. Similarly, if I go from B to C, guys, you can, you'll see this, that I get uh, plus 5 of X, but I lose 10 of Y, which means my opportunity cost or my slope here is minus 10 over plus 5, which is equal to minus 2, which means every time I get more of X, one more of X, I lose 2 of Y. Now, why is this opportunity cost uh, going um, up from uh, minus one to minus two, something which I want to talk about later. But one thing is for sure that the negative slope of the PPC tells us that as you make your choices and you get more of one good, you have to get less of another good because resources have to be diverted away from the production of let's say good X or good Y towards good X, which is telling us that there is an opportunity cost involved. 
So there's always an opportunity cost involved uh, when I move from uh, a point on the curve to another point on the curve because of diversion of resources. Now, what if you were at point F uh, or G here? Let's call this point G, which is not on the curve, which is inside the curve. And let's say you go to point B. Now at G, basically, you were making 40 of good Y and uh, 15 of good X. So when you move from G to B, you did not sacrifice anything of y because b is 40 of good y and 25 of good x. So as I move from g to b, more of x is taking place, but there is no sacrifice of y. So what does that mean? Well, it means that movement from point inside the PPC to a point on the PPC will have no opportunity cost. And why is that so? Because if you are not on the curve, let's say if you are making 40 and 15, then you are basically not producing at your full potential because 40 and 25 is full potential, but 40 and 15 means you are not producing on full potential. So one needs to understand this, that whenever we move from the PPC towards uh, the uh, point on the PPC curve, from a point inside, you will not have any opportunity cost because you, on the first place, have what we call unused resources. So you're not utilizing your resources fully and efficiently, and that is why you have a case of uh, no opportunity cost. So if you go back to our diagram, basically, when we look at opportunity cost, there is opportunity cost when I move from point from A to B or B to C, but not from point, for example, G to B, because there is an important idea that below the curve, any point, let's say G or H, all of these points are where I'm not using my resources fully or efficiently because I could do really uh, better by making more of one good without less of another, uh, which means I wasn't really using my resources to begin with. So unemployment and inefficiency is another concept that can be shown through the PPC diagram because if you are on the curve you are showing full employment but if you're not on the curve it means there is a existence of unemployment any point below the curve means that you can actually achieve more output of both good and X and Y and yet there is no opportunity cost so the economy that produces below the PPC is showing you employment as well as uh, inefficiency and and when we go towards the origin which means further away we are from the origin the higher will be the unemployment so this point H which is very close to the region is showing high unemployment as compared to for example a point like uh, W why? Because the closer you are towards the PPC, the better your utilization of resources and therefore the lower will be your unemployment. The last concept we would like to talk about is something called economic growth. What is economic growth? Well, economic growth is simply a rise in the productive potential of an economy, which means that we are looking at the shift of the PPC. Why is that so? Because now when you look at your PPC, you are looking at suddenly a higher productive potential. So if the PPC shifts to the right, this means there is an economic growth, which is simply an improvement in the quality or quantity of uh, your factors of pr production. So it implies simply that there is uh, a combination which was previously unattainable. So for example, if this is my uh, good X and this is my good Y, and let's say if there was this uh, combination right now, uh, we're producing at point uh, A, and let's say A dash was previously unattainable. When the PPC shift to the right, that combination, which was previously unattainable, is now attainable. So any improvement in the quality or quantity of factors of production will lead to a shift of the PPC. And Good examples of this could be, you know, if labor becomes more productive or if capital becomes more productive or if there's an improvement in technology, all of those factors can make the PPC curve shift to the right and therefore us to achieve anything which was previously unattainable. And that is basically 
mean that there is uh, economic growth taking place in the economy. Sometimes it also happens there is a, what we call a pivotal shift of the PPC. A pivotal shift of the PPC simply means that there is a rise in productive potential but of only one good. So let's say this is my PPC and suddenly there is an improvement in the productive potential of only one good. Let's say good X is labor intensive, right? Let me write this labor intensive and let's say good Y is um, capital intensive and suddenly labor becomes more productive. So if labor becomes more productive, so for every, for example, y that I'm making, let's say I'm making 30 of y and 10 of x, I will be able to make, let's say, more of x. So for every y, I'm making more of x, which means uh, there is what we call an improvement in the productive potential. So whenever we see a pivotal shift, we say there's an increase in the factors of production in terms of quality or quantity uh, geared towards one good. So pivotal shift of the PVC or a change in the slope is basically showing us when there's a change in the quality or quantity of factors of production which is specific to only one good. Uh, so X which was labor intensive saw an improvement but Y which was capital intensive did not see that improvement because Y was, was uh, using capital and not labor in our example. So, so these are the important concepts that PPC can tell us from scarcity, choice, opportunity cost and um, uh, rise in uh, economic growth can all be shown through a very simple concept of PPC.